Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today is another episode of Yarn Chat. We're gonna be talking about cotton yarns. We're gonna be talking about all of the differences and things and which yarns are good for what things and all that good stuff. So if you are wanting to kind of deep dive into cotton yarns, be sure you grab yourself a snack, a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, whatever your beverage of choice is, and hop back into this video and join me. Alrighty, so first things first. Um, I was talking to my assistant and I said, everybody on YouTube always kind of has like a name for their followers. Um, I watch a couple of urban explorers who I really love and they always say, hey, explorers, and I think that's really fun. And other YouTubers have different names. And so I tossed out the idea of Yarniacs to my assistant. And so I wanted to throw that out to you guys and say, what do you think if we call everyone who subscribes to the Yarn Hook Needles channel Yarniacs? We're all a little crazy about yarn, right? Um, I'm kind of okay with that. Kitty is stretching and readjusting. She seems to be my partner on these videos. But anyway, if you like the name Yarniacs, comment down below. Or if you have other suggestions, let me know. I think it would be kind of fun to have a nickname for us that I could say, hey, Yarniacs or whatever it is. So without further ado, let's get started. So cotton yarn, right? Um, it's everywhere. Every line of yarn has their own version of cotton yarns. And we've seen different projects made with different yarns. And I'm sure you've heard like mercerized cotton and then blended cottons and then 100% cottons. And you know, what's all this about? What does it mean? What do I use it for? I'm sure might have been some questions that run through your mind. So first I wanna talk about those hard, stiff cottons. And those would be the cottons that you see um, made for uh, like kitchen items and so lilies and cream I believe is what they used to be called I know at some point they had a name change but those are those little cakes um, I don't currently have any obviously but they're the little cakes of yarn that have been around for ages and ages and those cotton yarns are the ones that I love to use for kitchen rags for um, amigurumi projects that I know are gonna be like used a lot, like for kids, because um, a couple years ago I made a little amigurumi doll for my daughter. And you know, kids, they drag it on the floor, they chew on it, they drool on it, they do all of those things to it. And I just feel like the 100% cotton is sturdy and strong and can handle a kid just rough housing. Um, a couple of tips whenever you're working with the 100% cottons, they are stiff and that particular brand tends to unravel a little bit. Um, it's not a tight spin in the yarn, so it comes undone a little bit. Just a warning, especially if you're new to amigurumi, I would not suggest starting out amigurumi with that cotton practice on an acrylic or something else um, because that can be very frustrating and if you do it too many times where you get caught on a strand it will um, it will mess up and you won't be able to see the stitches as clearly but that yarn I only use for very 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 specific projects because like I said it's stiff it's not necessarily easy to work with um, and I would not give it to a beginner because they're gonna get very frustrated. So um, that cotton yarn, kitchen, amigurumi that you know is going to be loved on a lot, um, scrubbies like facial scrubbies, um, the little holders where you put your kitchen towel in like on your oven, that type of stuff is what I would use that for. Oh, or even like a Swiffer uh, mop cover that you wanna put on your Swiffer so you don't have to keep spending money great for that. Next up would be um, the mercerized cottons. And these are cottons that have more texture, more weight. They're definitely not as soft. And I would say that the stiffness, it's a different kind of a stiffness than what you would see with like the lilies and cream yarn. And it's because of what it what mercerized cotton is. So here's an example of a mercerized cotton project that I did a couple of years ago. I've got two different tops here that I've done mercerized cotton with. These tops are very, very durable. They have maintained their shape throughout the years. They wash amazingly. 
they um, they're heavier so they are definitely pieces that can be transitioned into autumn and winter if you have like layering that you do underneath it so it is good for that it's something that can be worn year-round depending on what the project is that you're making and so the first one I have is the very first garment that I ever designed and that is the Twiggy tunic and so the Twiggy is just two panels made the front panel is more of an open panel and then you can see on the back the back panel is just solid and if you look the texture is great you can see that it really holds up it stitches very well it has some stretch to it it's not super stiff so here's like that part and you can see it has some stretch to it this piece right here is um, three years old. This is a three-year-old piece and it still looks really, really good. And so mercerized cotton is really good if you really wanna wear your pieces. That's just kind of a little uh, piece of advice. The other piece that I designed with a mercerized cotton, and the mercerized cotton I'm speaking to is the Lion Brand 24-7 cotton. I'm not sure if I said that. Um, this was the Krista Top and I did this one last year. This one has kind of a cuffed, um, arm edging and then it has a cuff at the bottom and it's the same on both sides and it has a stitch that you can see right there and again it's got good stretch this has been washed multiple times and it's held up very very well uh, mercerized cotton is just so so good for longevity in apparel items or um, bags mercerized cotton is perfect for bags if you're wanting to make like um, a market bag it would be great for that if you want to make like a clutch or something like that it's going to be good because it's going to last long it's going to hold up to use and all of that it's easy to clean and um, and it's soft the mercerized cotton like I said because of what it is that has made it mercerized cotton it it's not super soft like like a cotton blend um, you know a, a cotton yarn that maybe is blended with an acrylic or a polyester or something else like that it's not as soft as that however it's soft enough that it gets the job done but it does have some weight to it and I will say that if I had realized how heavy the Krista top would have been I don't know that I would have necessarily picked the 24 7 cotton because of it being mercerized I probably would have done it in a little bit more of a lightweight not probably not a hundred percent cotton like um the comfy cotton blend which is from lion brand I probably would have done it in that a little more lightweight but definitely able to handle the durability of being worn a lot being washed um and all of that stuff and next is the top that I'm currently wearing and I'll just stand up I'll move the camera back just a smidge so this is the Adeline top that I made three years ago and this was made with the I Love Cotton yarn from Hobby Lobby. It is a blended cotton and it is very soft and as you can see it definitely has some stretch to it. Lots and lots of stretch. Um, this has been washed several times and it has held up very very well. Uh, I love the drape. It's definitely a better drape than your mercerized cotton. It's more elegant, more flowy, um, great for if you want to make like a bathing suit top or if you wanted to make this kind of a cover up or if you wanted to make like a poncho or a shawl or something like that. The drape of this cotton is just wonderful um, and I really like it. It's very soft and Hobby Lobby offers it in tons of colors so you have lots of options and I really like that yarn. Um, this is a yarn that I got um, three years ago, <laughs> I think, I was trying to remember. This is from an Etsy shop called Gansett, and it is a cotton cone, and this will be a good way that I can kind of describe to you what that other cotton does. So if you look here, you can see, let's see if it'll, focus on it you can see how there's multiple strands right there okay and they're all spun together into a strand of yarn now when you are crocheting it's very easy for these little strands to come 
Let me see if I can get it to focus right there. It's very easy for these little strands to get wrapped around your hook and they come undone. And as you're going through, you could easily get your hook caught like right through the middle, right there. You know, you just slip in real easy as you're working your hook. And so this cotton, while it is very soft and while it is very affordable and one cone goes a long way, um, it's not one that I would recommend for a beginner because of the way of the spin. Now, if you've done several projects and you're really familiar with like the look and the feel of stitches and stuff like that, I would say, yes, this would be a good cotton to use. And I will link Gansett down in the description box so that you can check out her stuff. Naraya is incredible. She um, is a sustainable yarn company and she's just amazing to work with. She has a beautiful little adopted daughter and I just love her. She's awesome. And so uh, she has lots of other products too, and she just released her own velvet yarn, which I will be doing something special in March with her velvet yarn, so be sure you stay tuned for that. But uh, yeah, it's, it's really soft. I created a Christmas stocking with her cotton cones, and I really enjoyed um, working with it. Uh, I plan to actually do something for summertime with more of her cotton cones, and so um, yeah, the, it's, it's a good yarn. It's very soft, very high quality, but if you're brand, brand new, I wouldn't steer you towards this. I would steer you towards something that has a tighter spin in the yarn, just because it can be frustrating when you're first trying to train your mind and the muscle memory and all of that stuff. You, um, you don't want extra things to trip you up and cause frustration. And so I would say once you get a couple of projects under your belt, you're very familiar with like understanding where things go, then I would direct you towards this yarn. Comfy Cotton Blend, which is a uh, cotton from Lion Brand. It is gorgeous, it is beautiful, it is soft, it is very similar to this. It comes in a cake form, they sell them at Walmart, they sell them on Amazon, all of that good stuff. Um, it is a super soft yarn. I have two designs, works in progress right now, that I am doing with that yarn. Um, and it's great for garments. Any of the blended cottons like this, I love this yarn from Hobby Lobby and the Comfy uh, Cotton Blend, they're exquisite for garment pieces for spring and summertime because they're breathable. The drape is just wonderful, it's beautiful. And typically, um, Comfy Cotton Blend doesn't have a ton of color options, but uh, this one, the, the cones from Gansett have lots of color options. I love this yarn, has lots of color options. Um, the blended cottons, I'm trying to think if I can think of any blended cottons that have wide color ranges. Um, I can't think of any off the top of my head. I'm like drawing a blank. So if you are wanting to do something that is good and breathable and airy and durable and all of that for summer and spring, I would definitely recommend any of the blended cottons, the Comfy Cotton Blend, the Gansett Cones, um, the I Love This Yarn. These are my top three blended choices. I just, I think they're great. And usually one to two to three skeins is more, or cakes, because the Comfy Cotton Blend comes in a cake, it's more than enough. Um, you're going to have plenty to do a project. Um, as far as the mercerized cottons are concerned, if you want to do pieces in a cotton that can get you through, like let's say spring, autumn, and winter, uh, those are good for that. Just And the only reason I say that I wouldn't do mercerized in summer is because it is heavier. It's just a weightier cotton and it's not going to breathe as well. It's not going to um, be as comfortable than if you have a cotton blend of yarn. And so saving the mercerized for pieces that you want to layer like over, you know, this kind of a thing. Um, like I would totally wear this with this underneath like that layered in the winter time because this is warm. It really is. Uh, but as far as like dead of summer when the sun is just blazing down and everybody's melting because it's so hot, I wouldn't because it's just so heavy. And so 
uh, I hope I wasn't like all over the place and I was at least able to kind of direct you and guide you. And down in the description, I'm gonna put links to the Lion Brand cottons that I'm speaking of so you can kind of like go check them out yourself and go look at them and kind of see the color options. Um, I did hear from the Moogly podcast, or no, it was, I don't think she calls it a podcast. It was a Moogly video where she kind of like showed a little bit of some of the new Red Heart yarns that are coming out. A lot of them looked very similar to the ones that we've already seen Lion Brand. They have one thing called Croquette and it looks just like Shawl in the Ball. It's just like smaller. Um, so you might be able to find some cottons over on Red Heart um, that you like. I don't tend to go that direction for cottons just because uh, I really like Hobby Lobby would be number one because of the color choices, but I know not everybody has a Hobby Lobby. I understand that. Um, but next would be Lion Brand and just something to share with you all. I do have a series starting in um, April that is going to start featuring yarns around the world. And so for those of you who are like, okay, I can't get anything from Joanne, I can't get anything from Lion Brand, I can't get anything from Hobby Lobby, I live in a different country. Don't worry, I have stuff coming for you as I am working right now with yarn companies that are in other countries so I can help you to be able to figure out what yarns to choose for what projects that are available to you. So for those international subscribers, just know, I am working on stuff for you and um, for those of us that are in America and Canada and stuff like that and we have access to some of these yarn stores, just know that you're gonna have some fun learning about yarn in other parts of the world because this is exciting, um, the thing that I've been working on. So I just wanted to tell you that and uh, all of these items that I am showing you, the Adeline, the Krista, and the Twiggy, I will also link down below if, you, if this is the first time you've ever seen these designs. You can go check those out too. The website is working. Our guys finished working on it and everything is good to go. So no more redirects to a terrible spam site. Um, and yeah, I hope that you are warm where you are. I hope that you're having a great Saturday and I hope that you have, uh, I guess tomorrow is Super Bowl. So if you watch that, we're not fans of sports. We just don't care. But if you do, I hope your team wins, whoever you're rooting for. I don't even know who's playing. But uh, I will be crocheting and knitting away and hanging out with family. So I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I will see you next week with some new designs, uh, some new yarn chats. And I'm thinking, I don't know. I think I'm going to keep it a surprise what I'm going to talk about next Saturday as far as yarn is concerned. Be following me on Instagram and I will hint at it and let you know. But with all that said, thank you Yarniacs. Is that going to be our name? Thank you Yarniacs and I will see you in the next video.